Hello, welcome today to another video about me dispelling and debunking the worst, most dangerous internet misinformation about kidney health. My name is Catherine and I've been working with people suffering from kidney disease for more than 10 years now. And what I found out is that the internet can be a very dangerous place if you have kidney disease. Yeah, lately, it almost feels like I've been spending more time dealing with internet gurus than actually talking about science and kidney health here. Because it's of no help that I tell you to avoid protein, for example, when there are 100 experts on the internet that will lie to you and tell you to do a keto. Just because they want to sell you some pills. Is to take at least, at least 10,000 IUs every single day yeah yeah people are actually doing this because hey what do they care if you end up on dialysis right it's not their health and at least their bank accounts are happy so time today to make sure these fake experts are not harming you with their dangerous misinformation time to debunk some of the most popular viral videos on youtube about kidney health Starting with a video with a very controversial take, to say the least. Let's take a look. In this video, we're going to break down seven easy methods that you can use to detox and cleanse your kidneys in a natural way. Mm. Be sure to stick around until the end to learn about... Okay, okay, let's cut the chase. I watched the whole video so you don't have to. Yeah, it was bad. But let's see what their secret tip to cleanse the kidneys actually is. Let's skip to the end of the video. Pay you may have now. already adjusted your diet to swap out processed sugar for artificial sweeteners mm. as a way to be healthy and consume fewer calories. This makes sense, right? Consuming less calories should equate to weight loss. Yes, this is actually correct, by the way. I mean, imagine being so bad at your job that even a meme understands dieting better than you. Consuming less calories should equate to weight loss. Unfortunately, Studies found that the opposite seems to be true. Okay. So they got the way diets work completely wrong. And they are also fat shaming people now. Not nice. Mm. Random YouTube health channel. And yeah, their advice about kidney cleanses is not just disrespectful. It's also incredibly dumb. Even worse than I was expecting. So I didn't make any edit cuts in this last part, alright? Consuming less calories should equate to weight loss. Unfortunately, studies found that the opposite seems to be true. Now guys, let's keep in mind here that if you want to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. This is how the human body works and it's not up to for debate. That's actually the reason why Basically, any diet works when it comes to losing weight. Yeah, you could do a diet as bad as paleo and still lose weight. I mean, you could, in theory, even only eat at McDonald's every day and still lose weight as long as you are in a caloric deficit. It's a basic law of thermodynamic. But they are actually telling people that studies found out that consuming less calories doesn't always equate to weight loss, which is completely wrong. So let's see when they are going with this. Avoid artificial sweeteners. Consuming less calories should equate to weight loss. Unfortunately, studies found that the opposite seems to be true. Artificial sweeteners actually negatively affect our taste buds, which stimulates an increased appetite and causes overeating to occur. Okay, so they are already contradicting their own theory. But let's say that I'm someone with diabetes and now I'm worried about what sugar-free mint that I had one hour ago. Is that going to make me gain weight? What should I eat instead? Instead, you can opt for natural sweeteners such as honey, maple syrup, and agave nectar. Okay, this is so wrong. 
and dangerous. I don't even know where to start from. So basically they are fat shaming people first then telling them that in order to cleanse their kidneys they must give up artificial sweeteners and eat honey instead. And keep in mind that almost 50% of CKD sufferers also have diabetes, alright? So they are telling diabetics to eat more honey, which is mostly sugar by the way, and that this is going to cleanse their kidneys, which is very, very bad. And what these people don't understand is that association is not the same as causation. Yeah, they read in a study that people who drink more zero calories soda are more at risk for diabetes and Suddenly, the artificial sweeteners are the cause for diabetes. No, that's not how it works. So obviously, don't replace stevia with maple syrup if you care about your health. I mean, have you ever received worse advice than this? No, seriously, let me know if you have ever received any worse advice than replacing stevia and sucralose with maple syrup. Let me know in comment section. Let's talk about this. And let me know if you want me to debunk other videos like this one. Now this video comes from one of those million health channels that only features some animations and a voiceover. No scientific sources are provided, no references. All you get is the cartoons and a guy with an annoying voice. Guys, these people are making millions of views on YouTube and they are not even confident enough in the advice they are giving. To show you their faces. Never trust this voice over videos if you care about your health and don't think even for a second that replacing stevia with maple syrup is going to help cleanse your kidneys, especially if you have diabetes. The advice this channel is giving is really dangerous. Up next, what can be even worse? Let's take a look! Foods to avoid or limit if you have bad kidneys. You know that our bodies are like intricate machines. Ah, here we go again. The nasty robot voiceover and the ugly cartoons again. How are these videos getting hundreds of thousands of views? Yeah, that's a huge amount of disinformation and a huge amount of people whose health was probably harmed. Because, well, listen to this. Avocados. Moving on to our second food, it might come as a surprise to many. No, not a surprise at all. This is the millionth video saying this about avocados. They can pose problems for those with kidney concerns. Avocados are high in potassium. When your kidneys aren't functioning fully, they may not be able to remove excess potassium from the blood, which if left unchecked, can cause heart rhythm problems and even cardiac arrest. Okay, so here's their great advice. Avoid avocados if you have kidney concerns. No, they don't specify if they talk about chronic kidney disease. They don't mention stages. Yeah, this video got all these views by recommending anyone with any kidney concerns to avoid avocados because avocados cause hyperkalemia, they say, and even cardiac arrest. And this must be true, right? They even have a drawing of someone being defibrillated. Okay guys, you probably already know that avoiding high potassium foods is no more a recommendation for people with chronic kidney disease. It was in the past, but it isn't anymore. But is recommending to avoid avocados actually dangerous? Well, yes, it is. That's why the guideline, the rule book, for kidney disease says that high potassium foods should not be restricted anymore. And there are various reasons why giving outdated advice to people with kidney concerns is bad and dangerous. First of all, because just one out of five kidney disease patients on average has high potassium levels. Second, because telling everyone to focus on limiting potassium is dangerous for them. Several studies proven that limiting fruit and vegetables intake, yeah, that's where the potassium is, is going to make your kidney disease progress faster. You should do the opposite, actually. You should eat more fruit and veggies. But now you may ask, if there are patients with too high serum potassium levels, aren't they supposed to limit their potassium intake? 
Well, not really. You see, these patients are going to have a false sense of safety by avoiding high potassium foods. They may think that since they are not eating bananas, their potassium level is going to be alright. Well, that never worked, says modern guideline for kidney disease. The cause of hyperkalemia is not potassium from foods, as we can read here. This is from the rule book for kidney disease, by the way. And there is more. What makes the advice of avoiding high potassium foods really dangerous is the fact that there is a high amount of kidney patients that suffers from low potassium levels and avoiding avocados can directly damage their kidneys. Because you see, potassium and sodium have two similar but opposite functions in the body. Sodium tells the muscles to contract and potassium tells them to relax. That's how the human body works and that's also why kidney patients are told to limit sodium. Too much sodium means the walls of the blood vessels are more contracted, but potassium on the other hand tells them to relax while also helping get rid of excess sodium through the kidneys. Yes, foods with high potassium content like avocados can actually help lowering blood pressure. So don't trust anyone actively telling people to limit high potassium foods with kidney disease. All right. Up next, have I found an even more dangerous advice than this one? Let's take a look. Okay, listen to this guy now. This is some of the worst misinformation I have ever encountered. Have you heard that high protein diets or even moderate protein diets or low carb diets can hurt your kidney function? It seems to be a common myth that's sort of circulating around the internet and around sort of dietary groups and so forth that protein and low carb diets can hurt your kidney function. But does the evidence support it? Yeah, he sells keto books for a living. And unfortunately, his video is now trending on YouTube and it's received more than 60,000 views. So clearly, he talks about the keto diet and kidney disease. Here's what he says about limiting protein in people with chronic kidney disease. But that raises concerns. Says, well, wait a second, if lowering protein can help kidney function, do we need to watch protein for everybody to protect their kidneys? Yeah, I can answer that. Yes, every single kidney disease patient, including those with diabetes, needs to watch their protein intake very closely if they don't want to end up in dialysis, obviously, says the clinical practice guidelines, the rule book for kidney disease. But I bet he has a different opinion. Kidney function, do we need to watch protein for everybody to protect their kidneys? Now, the overwhelming evidence, though, is no. As we mentioned in the, mm. in the guide, there's plenty of evidence of people eating high protein and moderate protein diets that don't worsen kidney function and actually may improve it. But now, we have another study to do that. And okay, this guy is a serious danger for people with kidney disease because these kind of can literally people. I mean, kidney disease sufferers died in the past because they were following a keto diet. So this guy says that there is overwhelming evidence that kidney disease patients can improve by following a high protein and low carb diet. Overwhelming! And I bet that I know what study he is referring to because there is only one study that linked higher protein intake to a higher kidney function. Let's see if I'm right. And here it is. Guys, you won't believe this, but this is a study that I've already debunked once in one of my previous videos from another keto seller. Because, well, while there are a hundred studies linking a low protein diet to a better kidney function, there is only one study linking a higher protein intake to a better kidney function. And every single keto hackster uses that study. So what's the problem with this study? Well, the only study on earth linking a low carbohydrate diet to a better kidney function that we can see from the description of this video was not done on kidney disease patients. As we can see here in the study he linked in description, yeah. The patients in this study never had chronic kidney disease. 
their GFR was 85, which is not recognized as chronic kidney disease before the intervention. And this is why you should never follow a keto or low carb diet with chronic kidney disease because clearly no one could have done a study on the keto diet with actual kidney patients. I mean, you are not authorized to people for a study, right? So next time this quack pops up into your feed, feel free to give him a thumb down. Up next, what can be even worse? Let's see. So how much phosphorus should you consume? So kidney disease patients may need to limit the intake to about 800 to 1000 milligrams per day. Now this one is not about protein, this is about phosphorus. Okay, this one is the number one because it's extremely dangerous advice. You see, this is not coming from a faceless cartoon with zero credibility. This advice comes from an accredited US hospital as YouTube is eager to tell us. And yet, this is outdated, rather bad advice. Let's see why. All phosphorus is not created equal. Okay, so there is some good advice in here, clearly, but there is also some bad and dangerous advice in here. The good part is that you should limit processed foods because the phosphorus they contain is very bad for you. I wish you gave this part more emphasis because, you see, phosphorus from processed food is one of the main drivers of kidney disease. It's much worse than previous believed. But the good part is that she's actually talking about this. So what's the bad part? All phosphorus is not created equal. So your body actually absorbs about 70% of the phosphorus in foods like beans, legumes, and nuts. So yeah, this information is not correct and it's dangerous. The body is not going to absorb 70% of phosphorus from beans, legumes, and nuts. That's not true. It's a well-established fact that the body can only absorb 30% to 50% of the phosphorus it gets from plant-based foods. And guys, this study I'm showing you is also quoted in the rule book for kidney disease as we can see here. So yeah, I wish these experts would, you know, just stop recommending people with kidney disease to avoid plant-based foods. That never worked. That never helped anyone. So clearly, even reputable sources are creating misinformation on YouTube. And this is especially bad because it is making people confused about phosphorus. And guys, today, controlling phosphorus levels is believed to be one of the key steps to improving kidney function. So if you want to make sure you are not doing any mistakes about this very important part of the treatment for kidney disease, Please watch my recent video about this topic. It's up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.